Hi again, and welcome back to the Learn to Code by Writing Space Invaders course. In our last lesson, we got the alien array moving left to right, and then when they got to the edge of the screen, jumping down a bit, and then reversing their direction. But that movement was all a bit fast at the moment, so we're going to learn in this lesson how to slow that down and control the speed by creating some delays. As well, if you are enjoying the course, please do make sure that you subscribe and like the videos, and that way I can keep you informed when I have new content published. So let's get on with our coding and jump into lesson number 16. If we get started in our normal way, so we'll load in our lesson 15 code, and then we'll instantly save it as lesson 16 to make sure we don't overwrite anything. And then we'll come in here and we'll just replace that. So if we have a look at where we are currently with our, with our software and run that by doing Control R, you'll see that we have the correct motion, but it is going at full speed. So let's get see how we can slow that down a bit then. So if we go into our code, we'll see that at the moment in our tick function down here, we have our move aliens function call. And that's being called every time we go through our tick function. And if we then go to that function, so if I come down here and go to the move aliens, you'll see that we actually do a movement every time we call this function. So at the moment, our aliens are moving 60 times per second, which of course is why they're going so fast across the screen. What we need to do now is we need a way of slowing that down. We still want the aliens to jump four pixels at a time, but we now don't want them to do it every single time we go through the tick function. So we're going to use a delay. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come up to the top here and we're going to define a couple of variables that are going to control this delay. So the actual delay time um, and that time is going to be in the number of ticks we run, is going to be set by our alien um, move delay variable. And we're going to start off setting that to about 30 so that they move um, every 30 ticks, which is every half a second. The way we're going to do it is that we're going to set up a counter which will start off at this move delay value and then count down every time we run the, the um, move aliens function. When it gets to zero, then we'll actually do the movement, reset the timer, and then start again. So in effect, we'll be counting every 30 ticks, doing a move, count another 30 ticks, and do a move. So we will need a counter for this then. So we'll need an alien move counter and we need to set that equal to our alien move delay. So that resets the counter then, and we're now starting our first block of 30. So if we now go to our um, move aliens function, so we have a block of code inside this function which does the actual moving of the aliens. So it starts with this if statement where we're making a decision. Um, if the aliens are at the edge, then we move down. Otherwise, we're going our left to right and we do our left to right movement here. And that there, that line, this if statement is the end of the if that goes with our if aliens at edge. So that whole block of code inside this function does the actual movement. What we're trying to do now is we're trying to make sure that this movement doesn't happen every time that we run the tick function. So what I want you to do is to have a think about how we can do that. So the clue here is that we have our alien move counter, which is the one which will have to be decremented, in other words, have one taken away from it every time we run this function. When it gets to zero, and you'll also need to check if it's got to zero or below zero, just in case something has happened, then we want to actually do our movement. And if we do our movement and it's got to zero, we have to reset the counter back to the, that alien move delay value. 
if it hasn't got to zero, then we simply do nothing. We just we just come back out of our, our move aliens function and we wait until the counter does reach zero. So see if you can put that little counter delay into this function. I'll give you a few seconds as usual on the counter. Um, do have a go um, and see if you can get it working. So see you in a few seconds. Hi again. So hopefully you've had a go at creating that delay. If you've managed to get it working, that's great, well done. If not, then follow me through here and we'll see where you went wrong and get a working solution. What we want to do here is we want to start working with that counter. So we're simply going to take one away from the counter every time we come in here. So we're gonna do alien move counter equal to alien move counter minus one. We're then going to check if we've got to zero. So if alien move counter is less than or equal to zero, so we'll do a less than or equal to, so that if we do have some error where we get less than zero, it will simply reset the whole system then that's when we actually need to do our movement. So this whole block of movement then needs to fit inside this if loop. So let me just tab all this in by one then. Just going through, just so I can make it all neat so we can see where everything fits in. So all the way down here. And that's all of our if statements in. Okay, so we have our if alien move counter is less than or equal to zero, then we do all of that. And we end, that's our if alien move counter if statement. Okay, so our function will come in We'll initialize our alien move counter to be the 30 value. Every time we call the move aliens function, we will take one away from the counter. Then if the counter has reached zero, we'll move. Otherwise, we won't do anything. We'll simply drop out the end here and we won't have moved the aliens. So we also need to think about then what happens when we do get to zero, we want to move but we'll also then need to reset this counter back to its start value. Otherwise, we'll simply be sat at zero and we'll, we'll simply move every single time again. So at the end of our movement, so in here, we want to then do our alien move counter. We want to reset that to our alien move delay. Remember, our alien move delay variable was the reset value for our counter. So that should be our alien slowed down. So let's see if that actually works. So I'm going to press Control R. And there we have our aliens now moving at one step every half a second. And when they get to the edge of the screen, they should then come down. When we eventually get there, obviously. And there we go. Okay, so we now have our aliens moving slower. But the important thing now is that we have a variable that controls that speed. So if I come back up here, we have this alien move delay, which is currently set to 30. But if we change that to say 10 and then run, you can see that we now are controlling the speed of our aliens. And again, we can further reduce that. If we reduce it down to zero, that will then get our aliens running at full speed, just like we had before. So let's put it back up to 30. So we now have our alien speed control in place. But if we have a look at where our software currently is, Everything's working as it should, in that the aliens are moving across the screen and we can control the speed. 
but they don't yet look as if they're walking, and all of our aliens are still exactly the same character, or the same sprite. So in our next lesson, we're going to address those problems. We're going to look at how we can create multiple alien types and have our array sort that out for us so that we display different sprites on the screen, and also how we can animate those sprites so they look as if they're taking a step each time they move. So don't forget to save your work. So come out and, and save your work. Again, I've already saved mine as lesson number 16. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.